What's going on guys, welcome to the video. We got a short one here, but I feel it's important. Sir John Curtis appeared on Andrew Marr's show this morning with a Labour MP and Times editor, which we will do a separate video on what the Labour MP had to say after. For this video, we're just going to listen to what John Curtis said about the election, as we only have four days left, and I feel this information is important. I'm not going to bother giving a rundown over it at the end. You guys can take from it what you will. It's pretty obvious what he's saying and would explain why the Labour MP says what she says in the video I'm going to make after this one. And as most of you know, Sir John Curtis is very knowledgeable in these situations, which is why you see the Labour MP and the newspaper editor agreeing with him and asking him questions in this clip. John, what is happening? Well, we've had five polls come out over the weekend. On average, they put the Conservatives 10 points ahead. And in truth, that's where we were at the beginning of the election campaign. So although during the course of the election campaign, there has been movement for both Conservative and Labour. Both have gained ground. Conservatives at the expense of the Brexit Party, Labour at the expense of Democrats. Certainly the implication of this morning's polls is that basically not very much further movement has happened during the course of the uh, last week, which does therefore mean that the Conservatives are certainly in poll position to win, but not necessarily so far ahead that they're guaranteed. We've had a couple of exercises done for pro-Remain organisations trying to come up with seats estimates using clever statistics 344 345 seats for the conservatives around a 40 majority a working majority now what that uh, misses of course at the moment is saying tactical voting because yep. there are lots of places in the country where people are looking very very seriously at how to defeat particularly a conservative candidate in different ways now we won't know what that what effect that's going to have until we actually get the results in presumably well one of the things about tactical voting we have to understand is that it people tend to decide to do it quite late in the day and therefore, and also it's a relatively small number of people who do it, it's to, but they can have a big impact. So the, it's therefore very difficult to see in the polls in the run up to an election, uh, what the extent to which is going to take place. And that's bound to remain one of the uncertainties that uh, will be hanging over central office during the course of the next four days. Yes. John, John can, I, can I ask you, because um, it's sort of reverse tactical voting is my question, yeah. because what I'm coming across uh, quite a bit on the doorstep is people who are in a bad mood, to put it mildly, with the Labour Party, who say, well, I don't want a Tory, but I'm going to vote for this third party, whether that be Brexit, independent, what have you. Um, now, the result will be the same, of course. That will result in a Tory majority. Do you... How big a problem do you think that third... The third party, the sort of... Well, I mean, the, the only reason why we're talking about tactical voting so much on the Remain side in the first place is that the Remain vote is split between Labour and the Democrats, although it's become more concentrated in Labour's hands during the course of the campaign, whereas on the Leave side, the mm. vote's all basically piled in behind the Conservatives. The Conservatives have 70% of the Leave vote. Labour has slightly less than 50% of the Remain vote. And that essentially are the two statistics you need to know to understand why Boris Johnson is currently heading for victory. So, sure. And, but then so the re arguments, therefore, on the Remain side about having tactical voting is trying to overcome that split by at least trying to get people to vote for whichever party seems better placed to defeat the Tories locally, but whether they will succeed or not. I mean, whatever happens, I think, in this election, we're still going to end up with a country that's deeply divided. That's, that's not, you know, that won't have healed, and I think that's a deep what, problem. What, whatever we decision we now make about Brexit, whether we go for leaving the European Union on 31st of January or going for a second referendum, will leave this country divided. I mm. think we've run out of road in finding any way of resolving We're Brexit that's yeah. going to actually keep the country together. We as politicians, and that's a great well, shame. But, 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 you're also re but, but in doing that, you're reflecting the view of the public. The public is polarised between the extreme John options. Well, that was the clip there. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it afterwards, but I thought I would. At the end of the day, you heard John Curtis say that they're about 10 points ahead, which is correct. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Boris Johnson's going to win. Yes, Remain organisations like Gina Miller's have done polls through various companies that have found out that the Tories are still likely to win. But as John said, we should take absolutely nothing for granted. They also discussed healing the country after the election, which as we all know, and I've said many times, there is no way to heal the division at the end of the day. You either leave or remain, but there is also another thing that is happening now. You're either for Corbyn or against him. Luckily at the moment, it seems most people are against him. And as I've said before, we should never trust the polls because like John Curtis said, many tactical voters won't do it until the very last minute. So maybe some Leave voters might need to start thinking about voting tactically if they haven't already. I know I plan to, but that's because I don't support any particular party, so I have no affiliation to none of them. Personally, I think they're all slime, as I'm sure you all know by now. 
But anyway, on that note, I will end the video there. Like I said, it was just a short one to bring you this bit of information from John Curtis when he was on the BBC. Because it seems not even the biased BBC will argue with his analysis of something. Which goes to show he might be one of the few sources we can actually trust. Now before I go, I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Leave a like, subscribe with a notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. This parliament is a dead parliament. It should no longer sit. It has no moral right to sit on these green benches. They don't like the truth. Twice they have been asked to let the electorate decide upon whether they should continue to sit in their seats while they block 17.4 million people's votes. This parliament is a disgrace. But they're too cowardly to give it away. But the time is coming. The time is coming, Mr. Speaker when even these turkeys won't be able to prevent Christmas. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>